Hey Ape Scholars, in this video we'll be going over the Unit 8 frame so that you can build a complete understanding of aquatic and terrestrial pollutants. This video is going to be very similar to the Unit 7 frame video. In Unit 7, we covered sources, human health impacts, environmental impacts, and ways to reduce air pollutants. And in Unit 8, we'll be doing the same process for aquatic and terrestrial or land-based pollutants. And just as a reminder, these frame review sheets are best for solidifying the information you've already learned and reviewed at least once. Now, if you want to just quickly review all the basic content that you need to know for unit eight, click that link in the video description below for the unit eight ultimate review packet video. Now, when it comes to all of these aquatic and terrestrial pollutants in unit eight, there are two enduring understandings from the college board. The first is that human actions have physical, chemical, and biological consequences for ecosystems. So pretty much the same as unit seven, except instead of focusing on the atmosphere, we're focusing on ecosystems. In the second half of unit eight, though, we switch to a different enduring understanding, which is that pollutants can have both direct and indirect effects on organisms, including humans. Because of this, we'll have have two different sets of key questions that we'll use while we're integrating all of this information from unit eight. For our first enduring understanding, we'll want to ask ourselves what human activities are covered in this topic and which specific pollutants, if any, these activities are releasing into aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. Next, we'll wanna ask ourselves what the physical, chemical, and biological consequences of these activities and or pollutants are for ecosystems. And finally, of course, we'll wanna consider what solutions there might be to reduce the harmful effects of these activities and or pollutants on ecosystems. So let's go through an example of how you can use this Unit 8 frame review to review topic 8.5, which is eutrophication. First, we need to remember that eutrophication is the process of a body of water becoming enriched with nutrients like phosphorus or nitrogen. Next, we can try to recall some human activities that can lead to a body of water becoming enriched with nutrients. One of the most common human activities is the use of fertilizers on agricultural fields or lawns or golf courses. These fertilizers are then carried into bodies of water by runoff. However, there are also other activities like poorly managing CAFO manure lagoons, or not putting human wastewater through enough treatment to reduce nutrient levels, which can also lead to eutrophication in bodies of water. Now let's take a look at the physical, chemical, and biological consequences of eutrophication. And we'll start with the basic chemical consequence, which is elevated nitrogen and or phosphorus levels in the water. Now, if growing conditions like sunlight and temperature are right, these elevated nutrient levels can lead to a cascade of biological consequences starting with an algae bloom. This explosion in algae population in a body of water reduces the water clarity and can block sunlight from reaching plants beneath the surface. This in turn can reduce photosynthesis beneath the surface and kill other plants beneath the surface of the water. And once the algae use up all of the excess nutrients, they experience a die off. This leads to microbes in the water using up a lot of dissolved oxygen to decompose the dead algae. This decrease in dissolved oxygen levels leads to a condition called hypoxia, where there's not enough dissolved oxygen in the water, which in turn can kill other organisms like fish or macroinvertebrates that don't have enough oxygen for respiration. In terms of solutions, anything that reduces nutrient inputs into bodies of water can help reduce the effects of eutrophication. We could reestablish riparian habitats along rivers so that these plants absorb some of the nutrients in runoff before they enter the river. Another strategy is for wastewater treatment plants to add tertiary treatment methods so they can further reduce nutrient levels before discharging their wastewater back into a river or other surface water. Now that we've reviewed the key questions that we wanna ask ourselves about eutrophication, let's practice making some topic to topic connections within unit eight and making some connections to topics from other units. Another topic from unit eight that we could connect eutrophication to is topic 8.6, which is thermal pollution. Both the nutrient pollution that leads to eutrophication and the heated wastewater or urban runoff that causes thermal pollution can ultimately result in hypoxia or decreased oxygen levels in water. This can lead to fish kills and other organisms dying in the water due to not having enough oxygen for respiration. In terms of topics from other units, sustainable agriculture techniques from topic 5.5 can be great strategies to reduce nutrient inputs into bodies of water. Farmers could use crop rotation with legumes, which could increase nitrogen levels in the soil and allow them to maybe apply less nitrogen containing fertilizer. They could also use cover crops in between harvests to reduce runoff from their fields entering bodies of water. We could also look at strategies to reduce urban runoff from topic 5.13. Since permeable pavement reduces urban runoff that could contain fertilizers from lawns or sediments, 
it would also be a great solution to produce nutrient inputs into aquatic ecosystems. All right, Ape Scholars, thanks for tuning in today for this review of eutrophication using the Unit 8 frame review sheets. And remember that if you wanna try filling out these frame review sheets yourself, just click that link to the ultimate review packet in the video description below. If you have questions about how to use these review sheets or any of the resources on this channel, or if you wanna try making a Unit 8 topic to topic connection, leave a comment below. And as always, think like a mountain and write like a scholar.